Do it again. Of all the gin joints in all the towns in all the world. You're listening to Drinks, Jokes, and Storytelling. The martini, shaken, not stirred. Don't try and church it up, son. You can't handle the truth. I am the, the picture that got small. Your first one's on us. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Drinks, Jokes, and Storytelling. I'm your host, Mark Rigadonna, and with me as always... Richie Byrne, with my hair oh, Richie, wet. you are looking slick. Well, I got to... I'm trying to get the mullet showing. Yeah, Since you got to fluff that bitch uh, out. <laughs> what? Fluff it out. I know, because I'm figuring, hey, it's NASCAR today, baby. Yeah, it's I NASCAR. Got to get NASCAR the mullet under. going. <laughs> Look at that, baby. Oh my god, I'm excited to have it on Sports uh, Back. This is really exciting. Man. It's gonna be a great show, man. I'm so pumped. It's Monday. Uh, real quick, I, I wanted to ask, uh, how was your weekend? My weekend was cool. Guess what I did this weekend, Mark? I know, but the viewers don't. I did stand up comedy. Look Woo-hoo, at this. Look at you. Look at me. I mean, look, I, I either was doing stand up comedy or I'm Wyatt Earp. I'm not sure. <laughs> Y'all better it, leave this town. It was a great show. It was at the Railroad Inn restaurant in uh, Lansdale. I think Lansdale, something like that, Pennsylvania. Linfield. Linfield. Railroad Street Bar and Grill, which is a great place. Have you been there? Have you been there? No. no it's I... not far from Joel's Club um, oh, okay. in Royersford. And these guys are amazing. They make the best grilled cheese sandwiches you've ever had in your life. I mean, they. Really? Yeah, it, they're amazing. And they did a, an open. They did a free show, uh, and, and people parked across the street. And look, you see that, and and sat in their chairs and hung out on their cars and took it. There we go, was, family. This was the by. one problem, Mark. It was like <laughs> people were walking and driving up and down the street. That was the only problem. I'm trying to do my act, and you know. They told me I could curse, and there's little kids walking by. <laughs> well, they said you can, you shouldn't, but you can. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a lot of fun, dude. I really enjoyed it. I had a. I wasn't time. getting the rust off the. Uh... It wasn't easy. At one point, I actually stood there and I looked at Joel. Joel, thank God, Joel was in the audience. I go, I don't remember my act at what all. He was yelling Joe stuff go? out. <laughs> no, Richie, at the end of the bit, you slip on the banana. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. The That's people, really... you know, it was hard to get a feel for the crowd, but, you know, because they're kind of distant from you. And, uh, but yeah. they were so into it, you know, yeah. like a couple of times, like even when, are you guys having a good time? They're like, go, oh, man, go, oh, man, you're doing great. Like, it was really cool. It was That's very- awesome. Who else were you working with? Uh, um, Min, um, um, Missy, Missy Gringowitz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Joel hosted. Joel hosted. That's a great was, show. Joel had a mic for each of us. <laughs> Smart man. He's Smart on. Man. He's on the porch, and he's cut, and everybody's already there, and he's got a mic. He does a sound check. He goes, Richie's mic, like the, Richie's mic, Richie's mic, like that, and then he pulls it down, and I go, Well, now you've talked it to it, Joel. And the crowd heard this, and everybody started laughing. I love it. Oh, God, I can't wait for comedy to be back for it, real. I, dude, I think this is what it's going to be for a while. Yeah. So, you know, hopefully we get a lot of work this summer just doing outdoor shows, you know? I saw Don Jameson did a, a music gig, and the band was in a little cabin on the porch of a little cabin, and he did stand up from the outhouse. There was like a fake outhouse. Get out, really? <laughs> Very cool. I was like, oh, here we go. It's back. <laughs> Very. That's wild, man. Yeah. I, uh, I was very pumped up this uh, weekend as well because sports is back. Yes, it is. We had our first sport back. We and, did. Uh, we had we two ready. yesterday, but one I didn't care about and one I did. The one I, I cared did. about. We have again. They had a golf thing yesterday. I didn't care. Oh yeah, I don't really watch golf, but I was excited. Uh, my boys actually have been to a NASCAR event. Really? Actually, yeah. There we are, the family. <laughs> we went down the uh, down in Dover, and um, we went to cheer on our guest. This was a couple years ago. Look, the kids. Uh, Axel did not like the loud sounds, but uh, they enjoyed it, and they still talk about it. They still remember it. I can't believe it. Um, they still talk about when they went racing. So when I told them racing was going to be on, they got all excited. Oh, that's great. 
Yeah. Wow. And, and I was never a big NASCAR guy until I became friends with our guest. And right. um, before actually... we bring a guest out, I just want to say we have our very first sponsor. Yes. Drinks, jokes, and storytelling. Now, Lansdale Tavern in Lansdale, Pennsylvania, right there, 839 West Main Street, 215-362-0460. Owned, owned by our good, dear friend, Buddy Harris, and his fiance Julie Palermo. And uh, 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 so they're, they're doing takeout right now. Uh, they have great food. And we love food. Buddy. And we wish him all the best with this. They just started. They only... I think they only bought the this place a few months ago. So yeah, it's very new you know. that they own it. So uh, <laughs> so if you're them. in the Lansdale area, show Buddy and, and Julie some love. Yeah, and uh, so what I, what I wanted to tell you was um, I actually got in the to watching uh, NASCAR, and I, I think I told you about the sketch album I did Ooh. recently about if Tom Brady, and we have the Tom Brady's number one fan calling all kinds of radio stations to talk about tom brady even though they're maybe not talking about tom brady so we wrote this one this is our nascar episode of if tom brady welcome back to pit road radio where we're all things nascar big day today we got lots of stuff to talk about bubba our producer let's get right to it we got a call this is gary from boston yeah how come you're not talking about tom brady I'm sorry, Gary. We're talking NASCAR. I know. I was listening. And I'm not really sure why you're calling. If Tom Brady drove for NASCAR, he would have won 300 championships by now. I love me some football, Gary, but I don't really see... Well, you ever seen uh, Tom Brady roll left? How hard could it be to lean left on a steering wheel far times? Two different sports, Gary. You don't want to tick off a bunch of NASCAR fans, so Bubba, let's grab us another call. Tom Brady would win the Brickyard 400 just to hear all the people from Boston say Brickyard, and he wouldn't have to take a four-game suspension for being accused of having not enough air in his tires. Okay, Gary. Trying to find some common ground here, brother, but I'm not following. What I'm saying is if Tom Brady drove for NASCAR, he would finish laps faster than a Southie topless hooker on crack. Gary... Let's stick with NASCAR. Besides, I don't know if Tom Brady could fit into a regulation NASCAR anyhow. If NASCAR wants to be popular, they would find a way to retrofit Tom Brady into a car. Maybe you could call your local sports talk radio show, because we got to go. Nice! <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we really enjoyed doing it um, with the, the NASCAR You and Briscoe, thing. right? Tom Briscoe? Yeah, Tom Briscoe and I have this character, Gary from Boston. So that was a little bit of a shameless promotion. <laughs> um, but now, oh, oh, there, shameless promotion. Joey's always on it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's, for that, we're already eight minutes in. We got to bring I this know. guy out, man. I'm so I excited. Know. Uh, I met this guy a couple years ago. We be became really good friends. Uh, his his uh, girl is such a sweetheart. Uh, folks, we're bringing him out. Brendan Poole, everybody. Brendan. Brendan Poole. How What's are up? you, man? Okay, first of all, that the Tom Brady NASCAR pit road, that Mark, that was hilarious. Man. It was. Oh, I, thank you. Know, you I, don't think you, I don't know if you can see me when I'm like waiting to get in, but I was like laughing the whole time. Oh, I was like, man, thank you. that is so funny. <laughs> um, because I have friends that are in Boston in that area, and the amount of Tom Brady stuff that I get is just ridiculous. It's just Tom Brady all day. I don't know what they're going to do this year now that he's not there. But no, they're anyway. all going to root for Tampa Bay. Yeah, they're all going to root for Tampa Bay, exactly. <laughs> and clutch timing with me and uh, Briscoe releasing this album uh, just before he announced he was leaving. So that yeah. was uh... Brady. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good timing. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you maybe. Go. Maybe uh, maybe there won't be a season this year, so we'll have one year to ride it out before we have to change it to Tampa Bay. <laughs> but uh, how excited are you to be back in the um, in the car? Yeah, it was good. I, I just feel happy that I can do something that's a little bit more normal instead of just you know like sim racing on my computer, which like like exploded over the last two months. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we were racing on national on Fox television, like nationally broadcasted TV, and we were you know, playing a game basically and like millions of people were watching. I'm like, this is, this is not, yeah, they, they got good ratings though. Right. For that. <laughs> like 2 million people were watching us play games. I mean, it was how so desperate people were for any sports, man. 
It was the <laughs> most most expensive t- uh, Twitch channel ever. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? You have two million people. I mean, Dale Earnhardt Jr. <laughs> was twitching. You could literally ride on board with him and like listen to him talking to his guys and friends and stuff. And uh, people were eating it up. He did yell at me in the last one because I crashed in the last race on there. So Junior yelled at me. Um, and so sorry, but uh, it was fun, man. It was a good time. I'm glad that we could entertain people somewhat during that time, but. Yeah. Um, it just felt good to be able to, to race. It was a little bit strange not having fans there. Um, you know, the fan, like, it's not like we're in an arena or a stadium or something where there you are there in front of the car yeah, and no stands. Yeah. You can see I've got my mask on and there's like no fan. This is literally five minutes before I got into the car yesterday. Um, and it's just strange. Cause like, but the fans do bring like a certain energy, you know, like you I walk. Gonna say, I was just going to ask you that. Yeah, the adrenaline. yeah they, you interact with them on your way, you know, whether you're you're going to walking through the garage or going out to the grid to get in your car, like you'll always have these like few key moments with with certain fans that you run into that are that are always kind of special. And so not having them there was definitely strange. I can tell you it was a lot easier leaving the racetrack because there was no fans. I didn't sit in traffic <laughs> on the way home. Yeah, no traffic. <laughs> but uh you know, it, it was fun, and and I'm glad we got to do it. And and um, I saw some today that like uh you know like 6.3 million people or something watched uh, yesterday, which was good. Um, those are good good numbers for us. So um, I feel like everything went good, man. One good. of your big fans was uh, David Spade, and uh, he put this up, and we thought it was so cool uh, when me and the kids were watching because we're big fans of David Spade. But he put this video up. I don't know if you had a chance to see it. I put Joey on the spot. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think I saw anything from David Spade yesterday. Or, or it was or like right before the race, but yeah, right before the race, he put up a little uh, a video. Um, Joe, if you have it, pop us in the private chat. Let us know, and we'll show it. But um, yeah, I, I I got ready to watch it, and it was it was really weird watching. Um, oh, okay, there was a glitch. So um, it was really weird <laughs> watching because. Uh, you're watching the cars, but you see the stands are empty. And that's usually part of the fun is like the, the loud cheering. Yeah. And then, yeah. Now when you're in the, when you're in the car, Brennan, do you feel the crowd at all? Do you have an idea of the crowd being there or is it just before and after the race? Yeah. I mean, when you're in the car, you're not really interacting. I mean, you can't, I mean, I can see that there's people in the stands, you know, yeah. but I, I'm not really, um, you know, you, you don't, you can't really tell, that they're there. I mean, on certain occasions when they're, you know, um, like, you know, you can kind of hear them cheer if like the whole crowd screams at one time and you're like on the stretch, you can kind of hear it, but not really. I mean, we have earplugs in and guys talking to us, you're sitting in, you know, engine, everything's right there. I mean, it's, it's so loud that, um, you don't really get that. You know, you don't like vibe off of the crowd. Like, you know, I imagine like NBA players and college athletes in an arena and, yeah. uh, game you can hear everybody cheering and going nuts. you're actually the one sport i never thought of this you're actually the one sport that doesn't get any feel off of the fans no not really it, only it, at uh, the very beginning and the very end yeah well and we're also unique in a way that um as an athlete you know i'm confined to my vehicle i'm not tackling another player i'm not passing a ball or, yeah. or sharing any equipment with anybody else i'm in my own space locked in the car for the whole time of the event like i can't get out There's i can't your ride yeah, so that was actually a new theme for this this past week too. So we did this. Um, Spartan Mosquito has a new product out, and uh, it's called Spartan Mosquito Protect. Guys, I'm telling you, if you got mosquitoes where you live, the thing it's ridiculous. It works so well. But we actually, you know, I do a lot of stuff uh, for the veterans uh, with the charity called Red, which is Remember Everyone Deployed, and we actually donated like hundreds of Spartan Mosquito Protect kits. Oh, that's These kits awesome. Their new product too. Um, the veteran operations there in uh, the Darlington area. And uh, so it was awesome to be able to, you know, help out with what we can. And this week, NASCAR, for those that didn't know, you know, we all, I had um, um, a nurse named Tatiana from Seattle, um, and we put her name um, over the door where my name usually is, just to honor a frontline hero. And, and every car in the field did that for for a, um, a frontline worker. So um, it was cool That's to be able to do that and you guys are awesome and i'm not i'm not just kissing your sponsor's ass but uh when when Lindsay told me that you were sponsored by spartan we actually used that at our house the the 
things that you hang yeah, on. Yeah, the eradicator. It's like in a tube. It's like a yeah. little. Yeah, you yeah. hang like two of those up in your yard. No mosquitoes. It was awesome. Yeah. Oh, but it's... here's what. So here's what David Spade had to say. Speaking of fans. Okay. We... Hey guys, Spade here, and I want to say good luck today uh, in the uh, race. And I know you're gonna do great. I miss it. I miss the cars going by. Meow 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 meow. That's my ringtone. So do good. Remember, six feet apart. I understand. Keep the cars a little spaced. Maybe decide up front who wins, just to keep it fun. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, he's funny, man. And it's cool that those guys are NASCAR fans. You know, we've had him and Adam Sandler and some of those guys that run around in that crew come to the track and and do the you know the be the give the command for us to fire engines and stuff. So um it's cool to have some of those guys that you watch and enjoy uh and in, like their movies i mean joe dierte i mean who <laughs> haven't forgotten that you know but uh to have those guys be fans and to be tuning in like it's crazy we don't you don't, you don't think about it when you're just performing and doing your job but um you know a lot of people tuned in yesterday to to watch us do what we love to do and that's pretty cool that's yeah. really cool man that's now listen mark we we're we're way into this, and we haven't got to the drink or the. We haven't joke. got to the drink or the joke yet. So what? What are you drinking, brother? What do you got there? I've got um, a little uh, Blanton's bourbon. Um, that's my favorite uh, nice. favorite bourbon. I, I like it, you know, and especially during the quarantine, you know, over the last two months, I about went through it. Okay, yeah. I'm trying to savor it because it's hard to get, man. You can't find this stuff. It's it's difficult to to find, but um, that's definitely my my favorite. Uh, favorite drink is just like Blanton's and maybe like you know two or three ice cubes and I'll sip them. How about you Richie? I'm you know what today I'm here in New York it was really warm for the first time and it just felt like a summer day finally so I got a little Sam Adams summer ale Ooh, all right yeah I'm screwing that up here huh there I'm, it, there. I'm doing like the exact opposite of you guys. You guys are doing such a like fun summer, nice, relaxing drink. I have a, uh, a Milano espresso with a little bit of cappuccino, uh, uh, the froth, and I threw a little Kahlua in. It's gonna be nice. it better be Kahlua. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's homemade <laughs> Kahlua. Yo, Mark, <laughs> dude, it's homemade Kahlua. It's it's uh, made from grain alcohol. This all stuff, right, uh, all right. That's the great. paint's going to come off my teeth. So, <laughs> there's the drink. You know, that's how you're going to be talking about NASCAR. That's how NASCAR got started is those guys bootlegging, racing, <laughs> they're running white liquor, okay? That's wow. right. Yeah. Is that true? I, you know, I've heard stories yeah. like that. Is that really true? That's true. If you go to the NASCAR Hall of Fame in Charlotte, they have a whole deal up for that Junior Johnson, like, built, and he built, like, a distillery, like, a – how he made white liquor, I guess, in the woods back in the day, like when NASCAR was basically starting. Um, but yeah, no, that's true. It basically, like all these guys were, uh, you know, talking smack about whose car was faster than the other guy's car when they were like, you know, running from the cops and stuff with the white liquor. So they um, started racing each other. And then it just kind of became like competition between one another. And, and more and more people just started getting into mm-hmm. the cars and racing. And um, and that's what it turned into, man. I mean, it's wow. Just that another reason why alcohol is a great thing. Exactly. <laughs> Bring and NASCAR, NASCAR together. <laughs> you know, I always thought it funny because uh, the Northeast NASCAR isn't as big. Everywhere else in the country, when I'm on the road, everybody's in the NASCAR. Like Sunday, yeah. I would go down to a bar to watch football and half of the people that are there to watch NASCAR. And this is when I was really young. And then I got, uh, do you remember the Speed Network? I think they're still yeah. around. Yeah. Um, well, the first, some of the first races I ran when I first started racing nationally and, and professionally, it was still on Speed Channel back in like 2011, 2012. It was still Speed Channel before Fox uh, bought it. Now it's Fox Sports 1. I did uh, a bunch of commercials for the show Pinks. I was like, okay, oh, yeah. And I did all their coming up on speed. That I was you. Like, <laughs> That's crazy. I didn't I didn't know that. I definitely not seen the show. And they were based out of Hoboken, New Jersey. I'm like, what Guido in Hoboken, New Jersey is in the motocross and NASCAR? But so, it, I think more people watch NASCAR than any other sport. It's amazing. Uh, uh, yeah. It, it it is. There's a lot of NASCAR fans, man. It's like yeah, as soon as I, you leave New Jersey, 
Yeah. NASCAR is everywhere. As soon as you make a ride into Pennsylvania, it's all NASCAR all the time. Uh, I, I think, um, yeah, you know, and I think the sport's been growing a lot here over the past couple of years. You know, we're starting to tap into some interesting markets. You know, NASCAR has the figures, but, you know, I, I, some of our, like, areas where, like, we have a lot of interest is Colorado. And in, like, Portland, Oregon, like, the interest is high because, you know, IndyCar goes to Portland, but NASCAR is yet to go there. So I think you'll see in the coming years – um, NASCAR started to branch out. Maybe, you know, we might race in some different markets in, in the future. We've got a new race car coming out. You know, it's not, we were trying to shoot for 2021 next year, but because of everything that's happened, it's going to be 2022. Um, but I, I think you're going to see some interesting things happen in, in our sport in the, in the next coming years. And, and interesting enough, like Los Angeles is like one of our biggest markets. Like we have such a huge following out there and we do race there in Fontana. It's like an hour from, from downtown LA. So, um, and the fans there are, are just, man, it's insane. And there's people camping out in the infield and partying and just like, you know, we're just like we go and race anywhere else. But you don't you wouldn't think that. But it's it's true. And and um, so it's been cool to be be a part of it. And, you know, of course, I get to see it firsthand. I travel all over the country and go to all these different markets and and see, um, you know, see the, the different types of engagement. So uh, it, it's cool. Now, yeah. Can I ask a question? How long? Since I mean, this you guys raced yesterday. Did you? How long before you found out that was coming down? It was definitely happening. How much? How much time? Well, I mean, we were all prepared as if it was going to happen, regardless, you know. So I mean, we went. The teams went back to work two weeks ago um, and started prepping the cars and getting them ready because pretty much no one had been in the shop for two months. So. Um, you know, I got to go to the shop a little bit and kind of like sit in my race car and make sure everything's comfortable this past week. And, um, you know, there was no practice, no qualifying, no nothing. So yeah, uh, we drove our car on a chassis dyno, made sure everything was tuned with the engine and, you know, all that kind of stuff, you know, normally things we would do at the racetrack and to actually practice the car. But since, you know, we weren't going to do that, we had to do it differently this week, wow. but, um, you know, I, I had my rookie meeting, you know, I'm a rookie. It's my first year in the, in the NASCAR cup series. So oh, wow, cool. Congrats. Congrats. thank you. Thanks. So they had all the rookies on a phone call, um, Saturday and, uh, we all talked about all the processes and if we had any questions or, you know, where we needed to go, but, you know, we had to go through some medical, um, checks and things before they let us into the yeah. track. We, we had to break getting out. tested. There's me getting uh, my temperature taken through the first gate. That was the second gate of being allowed into the track. And then I had to go through another gate to get into the infield. Um, and then I basically, once you went through all that and they knew that you were healthy or didn't have any symptoms of the virus, um, you basically, I just sat in my car, man, the whole the whole day. I have a vlog, actually. I, I filmed my experience. It's going to be dropping tonight. So you can kind of see the behind nice. the Tell us where people can uh, yeah, go, where? go check it out. Yeah, it's going to be on my YouTube channel. It's just Brennan Poole. If you just search me on YouTube. And I have other vlogs if you guys want to check those out from a couple yeah. of years ago. Um, you know, the vlogs are a lot of work. But I wanted to – You do a really good job with it. Um, Thank you. You have a lot of production behind it, which makes well, it really a exciting. Of, a lot of copy and Casey Neistat is what I, I did through that. But uh, – <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Um, I try to do some behind the scenes. A lot of it is me in my car. I sat in my car yesterday for four hours um, wow. before I could drive because we weren't allowed to go. The drivers were totally not allowed to be around anybody. Um, some drivers had their motorhomes there. I don't have a motorhome yet. Um, so I just like, hung out in my Tahoe and um, played on my phone. I called and talked to some people. And uh, I literally got dressed, put my fire suit and everything on in the back seat of my Tahoe and walked out to the grid. And we did the prayer and the national anthem, and I jumped in and raced. So wow. um, that was, I just bolted straight to my truck and drove home. I mean, there was no, uh, um, you know, there just wasn't, wasn't anybody there but essential race personnel and medical workers. I mean, that was it, you know. Wow. Interesting. So I grew up down the street from one of your friends. I grew up about four miles uh, down the road from uh, the Blaney's. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They they were big in that in that area, and or uh, Dave Blaney and the Pennsylvania Posse or whatever with the sprint car racing and all yeah, that. I grew up right next to the Sharon Speedway. You could hear it at night. You could hear the cars going. <laughs> That's and, awesome. Uh, the well, Blaney's I were that. like the people. You know, they were the yeah. kings. Well, man, he's they they're good. I mean, Dave was really good. His dad was a great race car driver and great at the sprint cars and. And uh, Ryan's been a really good racer. I've raced with him a lot when I was younger and coming through the ranks because we're about the same age. And yeah. uh, you know, we race against each other now on Sundays, which is uh, 
which is cool. You know, a lot of these guys that uh, I'm competing against, you know, at least a lot of the younger guys, the guys around my age, you know, we've been racing each other since we were 12, 13 years old. You know, we all started when we were, you know, probably five or so. But uh, as you start like moving forward and traveling around and racing, it's kind of like the same guys and the guys that you were racing against and guys that were winning one week and you were winning the next week and so, so forth and so on. Like little league with gasoline. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's a, it, you know, and, and so we end up still competing against each other, you know, all these years later, it's, it's, I think it's we have a video of you as a kid. Like you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's me. Uh, and my dad is buckling me in there. This is actually in California, I think somewhere and probably, Sacramento wow. area. That's where I I started. And you're originally and, uh, from Texas, right? Yeah, I grew up in Texas. I we moved to we moved to Texas when I was I turned seven, like the week after we got there. So I raced about uh, almost two years in in California, and then uh, we moved to Texas. And and you know, I mean, I was I was so little. I mean, I'm I pretty much was raised a Texan man. Like that's <laughs> I say I'm from Texas, you know. Right. Yeah. How, how, how do you really get involved at, at that age? How do you know this is something I want to do? I mean, obviously all kids love go-karts, but how did you know? Yeah. I'm going to get competitive. <laughs> I mean, I, that's a good question. I mean, I, I think that, um, you, you know, I, I knew at a young age, it's just what I wanted to do. It was in my heart. And, um, I, you know, I just worked so hard at it and I was winning a lot of races like right off of the bat. And I just kept that, that ambition and drive to be successful. I think I, I always knew that I was going to make it somehow, some way. Um, I, I just knew that I was, this is what I was destined to do. So I, um, you know, I've had a lot of ups and downs in my career. Many of my fans and many, um, people that are close to me know, you know, there, there are years, uh, you know, off and on, even after, even after making it, um, where I wasn't sure if I was going to race again. I mean, I, I worked three jobs, um, in racing after kind of like doing like what single a baseball is just very successful. I won a speedway championship. I've won six races. Like it wasn't, um, like I wasn't performing. So, um, you know, there are a lot of things that were, that were challenging and, um, uh, been fortunate enough that, um, God's opened the doors for me at the right times and, and, uh, put me in the right, uh, the right positions to be able to continue, um, you know, fighting for this. And, and, um, man, I mean, a, a couple of years ago, if you asked me if I'd been in cup right now, I don't know if I'd tell you that I'd be here, but, um, I, I just kept working towards it. And, and, um, you know, unfortunately the right partners and, and the right people have, have come on board and believed in me to give me the opportunity to race at the highest level. So it's my dream. I got to race the Daytona 500 this year, which was awesome. Wow. wow. And, um, yeah, man. I mean, so just That's to so get, awesome. I dreamed about when I was that little kid in that video um, is pretty, it's just, uh, it's pretty cool. Who were your idols? I'm sorry, Mark. Who were your idols growing up? Did you have any, like? Yeah, I always looked up to Jeff Gordon. Um, in, in California, the first uh, race car I ever drove, that first quarter midget I ever drove was at a, a little dirt track in Rio Linda called um, Capital. And um, that was the first place he ever drove. So I kind of had that in common with him. Okay, cool. So him kind of dominating NASCAR at that time, um, we just, my dad and I, we just kind of followed, you know, what, you know, kind of sort of similar steps of what he did as far as the mental aspects of the sport and things he would talk about. You know, I didn't go and race sprint cars and midgets and, and do that. After I did quarter midgets, I kind of went a little bit different route. My parents thought it would be safer for me because at the time sprint cars, and, and even to this day, I had one of my really good buddies who I raced against and we were teammates uh, in the ARCA when I raced in the ARCA Menard series, um, you know, he got injured really bad in sprint cars and I lost a, a, lost another friend a couple of years ago, actually got killed um, in, a, in a midget. They're just very dangerous cars. The so, first um, race I ever went to it in Sharon, that was sprint car and somebody car. passed away. That was yeah. Just, and, really? This yeah. man. Yeah. They're so fast and there's not a lot surrounding you and it's just, uh, they're dangerous. So my parents didn't want me to do it. And, and so I, we went a different route, but so I tried to, to follow, um, in the footsteps of, of the, of those guys, you know, and, and, uh, my dad wasn't a big racer. I'm a first generation race car driver. He didn't, um, know anything about racing. We didn't know anything about racing at the start. Like when I first drove, I didn't even know it's like to hug the bottom of the corner. Like I, you know, we knew literally nothing. So, uh, it was just a lot of, um, a lot of work, learn things the hard way. But I think that's ultimately what made me 
a uh, better race car driver and, and a better business guy. I think people forget, you know, NASCAR is a big business. Like it's a sport and we're competitors and, um, you know, we're athletes and we train and we do all the, the normal things. And, and, uh, but you know, there's sponsors involved and, and the sponsors are what make the race cars go around the track. And that's uh, going to be my next question is, is there a route to go to find sponsors? Cause I know they're hard to come by and it's difficult to make that work. Is there a regular route you go by or is it kind of like, you know, like it's the same, I guess, with comedians. They go, you know, why aren't you in a movie? Why don't you just be on Saturday Night Live? Like, oh, I didn't yeah. think of that. Well, I think, um, uh, I mean, sponsors are definitely challenging to find. Um, it's difficult. I think it's going to be uh, even more challenging in the next year after having gone through this pandemic. Um, it's just going to be tough. But um, I, I don't think there's any right way to go about it. I, I think if you're a race car driver and you're trying to make it right now, I think first and foremost is winning. I think ultimately if you, if winning a lot um, yeah. get, gets you opportunities to show what you can do. And then I think once you've kind of um, established yourself and sort of um, made it into, into one of the top three series and you're racing and performing and doing well and contending, you can sort of um, – you know, you use that to your advantage to sell yourself and what you're able to do. Um, and, and, you know, there's still sponsors and still people that are interested in the sport. I mean, we have a huge following. Um, yeah. Like I said, you know, Way six to get eyes on. Watched. I think the Daytona 500, it was like 12, 13 million people tuned in to watch. So, um, you know, as far as sports goes, it's still one of the highest. Our, our sport, as far as um, um, fans go, you know, there we have some of the most loyal fans to, you know, like brand loyalty is just, insane like if you sponsor in the sport and you're a nascar fan they 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 stick to the brands that sponsor in the sport um they just do and i know all of us appreciate them doing that um you know and, and what's unique about our sport is we're almost 50 50 male female fans which is no other wow sport. oh yeah wow yeah That's it's, it's crazy i don't know if it's just because we're guys wearing race suits that drive fast or what or if they like it or not i don't know but that's um, my yeah. name on here i yeah, put on a waffle belly <laughs> they call uh the groupies for comics chuckle fuckers and they call groupies for nascar waffle bellies because they're well, leaning against the fence well yeah that makes sense <laughs> <laughs> is that why you put it in as waffle belly today because it's a nascar episode or is that yep. well, i i put it racer x because i grew up in new york and the only Racing I knew was Speed Racer, the cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Racer hey. was his brother, and he was cool. If you look back at that video of me getting into that car, you'll see on the side of my car it says the Mach 5. I was number five for forever. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, very cool. Out, wait for it. And then you'll see it right on the nose cone here. Um, oh, you can see the the. You know, I remember seeing it. <laughs> yeah. There it is. There it the is. Mach 5. Yeah. yeah. You know, so um, – I was a huge speed racer guy and I was number five, like uh, a lot of my career. And then I also ran uh, number 17 was, was my number, but most of my um, stock car career, when I was starting to get noticed, you know, I ran the number number five. So, um, so when uh, you're driving, is this the scariest thing you can see in your rear view window when you're, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was it. You know, I had a, uh, there's a few guys that start coming up behind you and you start um, being a little concerned or, uh, you know, worried about them, I guess. You know, there's always, we call them squirrels, you know. Would be this guy here? Hold on. <laughs> that was my son the other day in the car. He gave me the look of death in the rearview mirror. I'm like, I got to take a picture of this. He's what like, What happened? That's true. What do you, are there, are there racers that you go, uh, this guy, this guy's an asshole. I got to be careful. Yes. Yeah. Well, we all have a, I mean, certain guys race you one way all the time and you just kind of know what to expect. And then I think the biggest thing that we fight is guys that race you differently all of the time. And you have like no idea what they're going to do or what to expect, but like certain drivers have tendencies, just like certain players have certain tendencies and right. you know, you the film. And I, I know what guys are going to do on restarts. I, I know, uh, what guys, what moves certain guys do at certain times. So you're just like ready for it, you know, depending on what situation you're in. So, yeah. um, is that something you study, you study film on 
all the racers, or is it just you've been going against them so much that you just learn their tendencies? Uh, a lot of times, you you know, you watch film on the guys that you're not used to racing. You know, like being a rookie this year, there's a lot of guys in the Cup Series I have that I'm racing against for the first time. So you try to watch film and learn what they're going to do. Um, but but there are a lot of guys that I've been racing against coming up that I, I kind of know what they're going to do. But everyone learns stuff every time they're in the race car and they do things differently because you learn stuff from other competitors. You know, I've raced side by side with Kyle Busch for the last several years. But, you know, he may do something at a certain track that I may not have experienced yet or haven't been right. in that situation yet because I am a rookie. And I'm like, oh, man, he like freaking wax my ass on that one thing. I need to do that differently next time I'm in that situation. And I'll write it down in my notes. And I'll go back and, and look at the film. You know, a lot of guys have onboard cameras. I had an onboard camera for years. So I could like sit there and watch myself for the whole race and see what I did wrong in certain situations and learn from it. So I don't make a mistake later on. You know, we do it. I mean, it's the same like any sport, you know, baseball guys watching pitchers and, and certain things and um, football players watching other teams and other players and what right. they do. I mean, we do the same things. So it's kind of cool. And I'm going to bring something full circle here. So um, we're talking about sports. How I met Brennan and Lindsay um, was I went to a Phillies game. I got asked to hang out in the box at a Phillies game with a friend of ours who a friend of ours from the show, Craig Gass. Yeah. And I bump into these guys and we just start talking. And next thing you know, I find out uh, Lindsay's father and Craig have done business together in radio. And oh, then really? I start talking to Brennan. He knows uh, the Blaney family, which I grew up near. And then Lindsay is a good friend of our friend, Dina Blizzard, who also has been on the show. Yeah. Oh, Craig. <laughs> so it's like, I guess for us. Yeah. It's such oh, a small funny. world of how we all came together. And then I was a producer on a film uh, called Dark State. And uh, Brendan had a part there, and uh, that's Lindsay all the way to the left, and then that's uh, and the uh, that's Ko who is the lead actress, and then Brendan, and then that's Nick Baruli, um, who is the lead man in it. Yeah. And, uh, so we got to hang out this and Nick, summer. Nick was the actor in uh, I'm Dying Up Here, right? Uh, and Fosse Verdon. And, and right, but yeah, he played a comic, and I'm dying up here. <laughs> that's but, funny. Uh, now, is there – real? I'm just wondering, when, when going back to sponsors for a minute, do you – is there a certain amount of sponsors that you're allowed to have? Do they limit you? Like, or do, can you get as many sponsors as you want? And, you know, how does that work? The races are all sort of valued. Um, you know, they, the races all kind of have a certain value on them. Um, so, like, per race, teams are selling them for a certain amount. And different teams oh, okay. – for you know, different rates. Obviously, if you're the best team at the time and you have the best driver at the time, the 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 demand to sponsor them is a little bit higher, so they can charge a little bit more money, right? Um, you right. know, if you're up front and you're winning races, you get a little bit more media, you get a little bit more uh, time on TV and interviews after when you win and stuff like that. So um, that co costs more money because you're getting more exposure. So uh, sponsors will pay um, for certain guys and, and certain teams differently. Um, so it just kind of depends, you know, I'm, I'm kind of being developed. So the way that my sponsor stuff work, it's kind of, um, developing me and my brand right now in, in order to be in a position, you know, hopefully in the next year, the following years to, uh, be able to go up there and race and, and win championships and races. So, um, I'm sort of being developed at this moment in time. Right. So, um, and, and that's good for me. You know, I'm learning a lot. I'm not in the best equipment. So like our team, you know, anytime that we can finish inside the top 30 out of 40 cars, that's a really good day for us. So we finished 27th yesterday. That's like a fantastic day. Like everyone is ecstatic, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That's kind of my goals. And I know if I don't make any mistakes and I learn as much as possible and I do a good job on pit road and I have no problems and then I've done my job, right? And, and I'm learning these things um, as we go. So in the following years, when I um, am in a position to be able to win races, I can go and, and make that happen. Is there an age where guys retire or think about retiring or is it very? Yeah. It varies. I think for the most part, I'd say on average is around 45 years old. I think that's about the time when a lot of race car drivers start losing reaction 
time a little Start bit. Start wearing real big glasses and hats and driving like <laughs> this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I think it's just like, you know, you lose that little bit and, 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 and that's the difference from being able to, to really um, contend week in and week out. And, and um, you know, you see guys like Jeff Gordon who retired right around 40, 44 and uh, Jimmy Johnson's there now, and he, he'll be retiring at the end of this year. Um, Kevin Harvick is one that's just, uh, he won last night. Yeah. Well, he won yesterday and, and he just signed a contract extension for another three years. So he's looking well. He's looking at almost 46, 47 years old um, at the end of his next contract. So um, there are some guys. Mark Martin went until he was like 50, which is pretty rare. I mean, he's like kind of the oldest one to be who've done it that long and be competitive the whole time. I mean, he right. was like 59, 50 years old and still he won like five races one year. I mean, he was, you know, that's just kind of. It was just embarrassing when he'd leave the turn signal on. Yeah, just like <laughs> left it on. The guy in second, is like, oh my god, this idiot's blinker's still on. Uh, now, when when you retire, <laughs> is there a musical career in your future? What's going on with the guitar behind you? Because oh yeah, that's my. This is my. Uh, this is a limited edition Les Paul too. This nice is my favorite guitar. Um, I've got it hung on the wall here. Um, I don't play it that much. I play a lot more acoustic. Um, it's downstairs in my living room. I'll pick it up and play. I'm, I'm not like the crazy good guitar player. I just, um, you know, I can play a few songs and I'll jam out a little bit. But, um, you know, I, I, it's just something I do for fun. I don't take it too seriously. Uh, uh, yeah, I actually hung out with Les Paul a couple of times, which was one of the coolest things in my career to say I did that. Well, that's awesome. I mean, yeah. it, music yeah. is something I'm passionate about. I wish I was better at it i wish i could sing good i wish i could do it my my mom's side of the family her uncles my uncles uh they all play guitar and they're like incredible i'm like where did that come from my dad can't sing at all so i must have got it from him <laughs> I, I'm like tone deaf or something <laughs> <laughs> well in rapping uh we want to thank you so much for coming we didn't get on. the joke oh, oh yeah hey. you guys want to hear a coronavirus joke yes i do you guys you probably won't get it <laughs> i think i told it before but since he has the limited edition guitar there uh a woman is uh in front of a judge she just beat her husband to death with his classic guitar uh, collection and the judge looked at him looked at the woman and said first offender and she goes no a gibson and then offender <laughs> 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 that was for the guitar, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, well I, you have that joke about me too on your last album. Absolutely, we're gonna go out on it. When we go out, we'll play that before uh, we go to the closing credits. Yeah, we, but... we come prepared, Brennan. We come prepared. We gotta have you back on, and maybe yes. you could, um, maybe throughout the season, you could give us some um, some tips and tell us what's going on. And oh, that'd be great. Have dude. our viewers uh, get a get a taste because uh, I think. It's it's insanely important that we we have you on here and you can kind of teach us a little more about NASCAR. We can talk history. Just sports coming back in general is important. And so, yeah. is the schedule going to be the same now? So, or is it... You don't even really understand the schedule that well. So <laughs> I'm racing Wednesday uh, again, and it will be on Fox again, so you guys can tune in. Um, it's only going to be it's 500 kilometers this time, so it's like 300 miles or something. Um, it's a little bit shorter. Um, but we're trying to make up some races. So, um, you know, we're not going to Chicago this year or Sonoma in, in Northern California. Um, we're, we're making up a Texas race date, I believe, too. So we're like making up races we've already missed so that we can, way we can kind of like get caught up. And then sort of when things open back up more along the country, we can kind of go back and have our normal playoffs. Um, you know, we have a, a 10 race playoff at the end of the season that I know NASCAR would really like to keep those 10 races the same. Um, so, um, we'll see what happens. I'm going to be running the, the Coca-Cola 600 in, in a week on, a, on Sunday. I'm running the truck race Tuesday after that. I'm going to run, dude, my schedule is crazy. I'm going to run <laughs> 600 miles on Sunday, turn, turn, have Monday off, race 250 miles on Tuesday, and then do another 500-kilometer cup race on Wednesday. So I'm doing like 1,000 miles in three days or something. It's Brennan's gonna, basically yeah. a road comic. Yeah, that's what yeah. <laughs> pretty much yeah, a much cooler car. Yeah. Um, <laughs> better chicks. I can have fun. I may say a few jokes on the radio here and there. And um, you know, Mark, you also forgot to mention too, you helped me do a stand up act. Like you that's helped right. create my act and I did it 
and it went really well. I don't think I'm going to do it again. What you guys do is ridiculous. It's like I had to have like four Crown and Cokes before I went up there and, uh, and let it rip. But it went really well. I got a lot of laughs. And because of it, Mark, you have helped me win uh, tickets to go back there for like another show to like watch real comics, not me on an open mic night. But they and I got like a free dinner, like date meal night thing out of it with Lindsay nice. at the comedy club. So oh. I appreciate that, dude. We gotta you, have you back on. You had four, four crown and cokes before you went up. Yeah, I did. It might have been the same weird. thing if I had a race. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I know. I, I started the joke too with the uh, with what what you know what Mark used. Uh, and his album, which I guess I don't know if you're playing when we leave out, but I started it off that way, and I got some laughs. It's 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 easy when you make fun of yourself first to get everybody, you know, on your side, on your side, and you know, lightened up and get the crowd <laughs> moving a little bit. But those open mic nights are hard because you got other comics in there, and they don't want to laugh at your stuff, even if it is funny. <laughs> so, like it's tough, man. They're tough out. In Charlotte, in general, I hear from you know, I live in Charlotte, North Carolina. I feel like they have. Tough crowds. I don't know if you guys have performed here or not. I think you have, Mark, right? It's, yeah, I've I have two crowd. years ago. Crowd. Yeah, it's just challenged. They're like, you better be funny or like, you yeah. know. Two not- of the hardest cities I think to do is Charlotte and Nashville. They're, yeah, I can see that. Nashville, I guess, is a similar, similar type crowd. They have a high expectation. Uh, yeah, high <laughs> expectations. Like, you know, I, I think, Mark, guy, guy races cars for a living. He's telling us our job is hard. Seriously, I know. I do. It's hard. You guys have. It's a challenging. I'm not gonna say mine's not. I gotta like basically ride a bicycle and run and work out every day, and then drive cars for 600 miles next to. I was talking to my dad last night on the way home. I'll tell you the story real quick. But um, my dad called me, and, and I was like, "Yeah, you know, the race went really well. You know, I said you know, it was tough. We had it was kind of an up and down day, but we still finished strong." And I was like, you know, it was still, you know, it was a lot of fun, you know, racing up against the wall, like going 180 miles an hour. I'm like, I feel blessed. I got to do what I love to do. He's like, well, I think you're crazy, but yeah, I guess that was pretty cool. Cause you know, I, I think it's fun. He thinks I'm not. <laughs> he goes, I'd rather just watch it on the Dukes of Hazard, not my son do it live. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, we're going to have you back on. Cause I, I definitely think it would be interesting for you to teach us how the scoring process works, how the playoffs work. You can yeah. walk us through and make it a, 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 a regular thing. Yeah, we'd love to have you back, man. You're great. Yeah, anytime, let me know. Um, I'm here, man. I, cool. I, love, I love talking, as you can tell. I talk a lot. <laughs> You're good at it, dude. Good. Uh, hey, don't leave the studio, but we're going to cut out. Give Lindsay a big hug from us. I will. Um, we got to talk on, about man. that, Lindsay and I's project and all that kind of yeah. stuff. So, uh, folks, that was Drinks, Jokes, and Storytelling. I, I was never really into it. I became friends with a guy who races NASCAR, and um, he told me this. He told me this in privacy. He doesn't want it to get out. His name's Brendan Poole. Um, <laughs> he told me they actually are in that car for so long, like four hours, and it is like 120 degrees inside the car, and they have to drink a ton of fluid because they're just sweating the entire time. So they have to drink a ton of fluid. I'm like, well, what do you got to do when you pee? And he goes... We just pee our pants. It evaporates because it's so hot in there. And he's like, but don't let anyone know that. Hey, dude, you're 26 years old. I'm 36. I pissed my pants driving home from a bar. <laughs> Last call. Thanks for listening to Drinks, Jokes.